The wait is over. Yes, Mac OS Ventura is now officially out, available for you to download. And you know what that means. That means it's time to cover some of my favorite tips and tricks with this new operating system. And you know what? I want to just jump right into it because we got a lot of tips and tricks. So I'm going to do you a favor and skip the normal boring preamble that a lot of us YouTubers usually do. So let's get right into it. And I think by far one of the coolest tips with Mac OS Ventura is actually the ability to use your iPhone as a webcam. So uh, basically what you gotta do is whenever you're going into like a video call or uh, if you open up QuickTime Player, which we're gonna do right here, um, you're going to see a new option. So if you go over to this like record section over here, click on this drop down menu, you're gonna see that normally it will default to the webcam right there on the MacBook. Uh, but you'll also see there's now another option you can actually connect. I, it says Greg's iPhone 13 Pro 2. This is an iPhone 14. That's kind of weird. I, I guess I have to rename this. But anyway, you can click on uh, this and watch what's going to happen. So I'm going to click on this and it's going to connect to my iPhone over here. And basically it's a little connection. So now look at that. Wow. It's already connected. You can see that the uh, webcam feed is now on the iPhone and you can just basically use this as a webcam. So that means you can either walk around with the iPhone, like maybe you wanna show someone something, you wanna walk around, take like a FaceTime call or uh, like a Zoom meeting just right from your iPhone if you're on your MacBook, or that also means, again, you can use this as a webcam. Uh, if you are going to use it as a webcam, you're gonna need something like this MagSafe uh, Belkin adapter, which attaches right on your MacBook or use something like a tripod with like an iPhone adapter. This is pretty cool though. This, is, this was like $30. Uh, it's a very cool accessory. Basically it just magnetically connects to the back of your iPhone with MagSafe. And you basically just have this little lip right over here. And basically you just place it right down on top of your MacBook's uh, like top lid on the display and actually stays up like this. So you can see right over here, we got the iPhone set up. It is using the camera for the webcam. And then there's also some cool tricks when you're using your iPhone uh, as a webcam. So we're going to now go over into Control Center, and then we're going to go over to the Video Effects area. Now, you'll see a couple different things here. So when you're using your iPhone as a camera on your Mac, you can now do things like Center Stage. So Center Stage is normally uh, a built-in feature on the iPad or the new uh, studio display, but now, because we have the iPhone, we can actually use uh, Center Stage, and this will follow you around. So you kind of just move around, center stage moves around with you. And this is probably the best version of center stage in terms of video quality, because the video quality on the iPhone just looks super, super nice. So yeah, you can move around and you can basically see it follows me just like center stage would on your iPad or, or that new studio display. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out some of the other effects too. So let's go ahead and go back into control center, hit the video effects. And now let's look at portrait. So when we do portrait, this is actually going to blur out the background uh, behind me. So uh, maybe if you don't want someone seeing like your hook VHS over there, you could blur out the background, people won't see it. And then you also have the ability to do a uh, studio light and that's gonna kind of like brighten up your face and then dim the background a little bit. And you can turn these on or off and you can toggle them all in the same time if you really want to. Uh, but then I think perhaps the coolest feature with this iPhone continuity camera, using it as a webcam, is what Apple calls desk view. So again, we're in this control center section in the top right. Now go over here and click down on desk view. And it kind of gives you like a little explainer about what this is. So with desk view, you're basically using the iPhone's camera uh, and it's going to give you a top down view on your desk. So you kind of see there's like a little guide over here and you can shrink this down to where the desk actually is. You can increase as well. So let's shrink this down. It's like about here and start desk view. And now look, you can actually see my hands. It's not super perfect right now. I didn't really optimize it for it, but look, if we're doing like a top down view, like I'm showing you off the, the new iPod, the new iPod. Yes, there is a, no, there's not a new iPod. This is old, but look, you can see the iPod and I can kind of do like a little like YouTube unboxing thing with the uh, desk view camera. We can, Zoom this out and look, that's like a much better top-down section. But yeah, basically anywhere where you can access your MacBook's webcam, you can access this new continuity camera feature on your iPhone. This is probably like the coolest trick. I probably shouldn't have put it in the front. I probably spoiled everything, but you know what? You deserve to get the best first. I don't wanna waste your time, but let's move on because there is a lot more interesting stuff with Mac OS Ventura. And I think by far one of the biggest changes to Mac OS Ventura is what 
Apple calls Stage Manager. Now you may have heard about this feature uh, being new on the iPad where it actually allows you to window apps. And of course on Mac, you'd always window apps, but now uh, it's just a new way to deal with those windows. So if you go over to Control Center again in this top right area, click on this, you're gonna see a new toggle for Stage Manager. So go ahead and click on Stage Manager. And then it's actually going to give you like a little tutorial on how Stage Manager works. So just go ahead and hit Turn on Stage Manager. Let's open up a few apps. Okay, and you can see I have Safari open here, right? So this kind of looks like a normal view of Safari, but let's go say I open the podcast app. Well, look at that. The podcast app is now open and my Safari window now actually went over into this section on the side. So this is kind of a way to help you manage windows. So if you go ahead and click over on the side over here again, well, there you go. There's Safari, the podcast player shrinks down uh, to this left hand area. Now let's go ahead and open up the calendar. We're going to open up the calendar. So now we have the calendar and you can see that uh, we have, you know, Safari in the left. Uh, if we click on Safari again, it's going to pop there. If we click on the podcast, it's going to pop up there. Your windows are going to kind of be managed like this, but let's go ahead and say we want two apps open, right? We want our podcast open and we want Safari open. Well, all you have to do is just take Safari, drag it out. It pops up in this window and then your calendar is still gonna be here. Now, this is kind of like an active group of uh, windows that are organized in Stage Manager. So now when I go and click on the calendar, both of those windows are going to shrink down. And if I click on those again, though they are gonna pop up to the front. So I think you get the idea. But hey, if you don't like Stage Manager, don't forget, if you wanna turn it off, just go over to Control Center in the top right and then toggle Stage Manager. It's gonna automatically turn all that off, which also means you can kind of use this as a hybrid approach, right? Like if you want it, uh, all your windows in the front, you could do that. And then you're like, oh, this is a little messy. Let me go click stage manager. That'll help organize some of the chaos there. Okay, but let's move along because there's actually another tip I need to tell you about with Mac OS Ventura. And that is the new settings tab. This is completely revamped now. So if you go over and click in this top left on this little apple over here, and if you go down to this drop down window, you'll notice that it's no longer called system preferences. It is now called system settings. So if you click on system settings, you're gonna see something that looks much more like the iOS system settings rather than the old macOS system preferences. Now, I didn't just take you into system settings just to show you that I got a fresh new coat of paint. I also wanna show you a new trick within system settings, and that is how to enable background noise. So again, go into system settings. If you don't remember how to do that, you click this top left Apple over here, get to this drop down menu, click on system settings. It's, it's already open for us, so we don't have to do that again, but you're in system settings, scroll down to accessibility, click on that, and then go ahead and click on audio over here. You're gonna see a lot of different settings, but what you wanna do is just go all the way down and you're gonna see this new toggle for background sounds. So basically, if you wanna relax, you want something relaxing in the background, like a stream or the sound of rain or a white noise, you can now just get this defaultly on macOS. You don't have to go to the 10 hour YouTube playlist of rain and turn that on. You can just go ahead and enable this uh, right in your system settings. So uh, we're gonna do that. Just click this over here. And now you can see that we have the background sound enabled and you can hear a nice calming stream. Now, of course you can change this. So uh, if you go to background sound, you can hit choose and you'll get a whole bunch of different options. So uh, let's go ahead and enable background sounds again. Let's go to choose and you can hear the stream. Now you can hear the rain. Now you can hear the ocean. You can hear dark noise, bright noise, and balance noise, whatever that means. I like the rain. I think that's the best thing to focus on. I actually really like background noises or just something to kind of keep my mind from racing. Like, like my mind's like pretty active all the time. So background sounds kind of help me relax, especially when I'm trying to focus or, you know, back when I used to study uh, for school. I don't do that anymore, but it, it, those were pretty helpful. So if you're like me, you need something in the background to kind of keep your mind from racing. Well, now Mac OS has background sounds. Go ahead and give it a shot. All right, let's get out of system settings. Let me show you some more general tips and tricks with Mac OS Ventura. And I think one of my favorites by far is the new improved dictation. To use this new dictation method, basically you're just gonna go anywhere you would type. So you could do this in mail, you could do this on like a Safari search field. Uh, for me, I'm just gonna open up the notes app and do it there. And then on your keyboard, if you press F5, you will see dictation. Now it's gonna ask you, do you want to enable dictation? I'm gonna hit okay. Uh, I'm gonna hit enable again. So enable all that. And again, if you wanna enable dictation again, you just press F5. And once we do that, you're going to notice something different as I'm talking into dictation. Now, 
Dictation on macOS is not new. macOS has always had dictation, but now you can see that the punctuation is automatically being filled in. And hey, it's just a new and improved way to use dictation. Give it a shot for yourself. Okay, let's move along because there's some more tips to cover on macOS Ventura. And that includes using some new default apps. And this has been like long requested for a long time now, but yes, weather is finally on macOS Ventura. So uh, if you don't know where weather is or you're trying to look for it, you can find it in the finder or you can just go over here and click on Launchpad. And if we scroll over to these uh, apps, you can see now that weather is included. So go ahead and click on weather and look at that. So weather on Mac OS, like there's not much more to say there. It's just there. Like if you're not used to having the default weather app on Mac OS, it's now there. You can see a lot of new things too. So it gives you um, a pretty detailed view of all the weather for the week. You have your UV index, your sunrise, your wind, and you can even kind of like click into these um, weather, weather fields and you can kind of scroll along and see the weather uh, at different times, kind of get like a more detailed view of it. Uh, but you might've noticed something else when we open this weather app. There was another new app right next to it, and that would be the clock app. So again, uh, look, you hit on clock on macOS Ventura, and you're going to notice an interface that is very similar to what you would get on iPad OS. Uh, so you can see over here, there is a section for a timer, there is a world clock, there is your alarms, and there's also a stopwatch. So basically, if you're used to uh, the clock app on your iPhone, all the standard controls are here as well. So let's say we wanna set a timer, we can start that. You can see the timer counting down. If you wanted to do a stopwatch, you can hit the stopwatch, it, it starts doing that. You can even track laps. I don't know who's tracking laps with the with the laptop. Maybe, maybe if you're tracking someone else's laps and you're going, okay, you have the laptop and you're watching people run, you can hit lap, lap, lap. Or maybe you're running with your MacBook Air and you could tap, no one's doing that, right? So you could track laps, uh, but you have the alarms too, right? If you wanna set an alarm, I made one over here, but you can just hit this plus button. And then if you wanna set it for uh, every day of the week, you could do that. And you can also just type out the time over here and you go, you know, we're gonna wake up at 4.30 in, in the morning. But that's not all, because now that you have a new clock app and a new weather app, you might also wanna give Siri a second shot on the Mac because it now has a new user interface. So you can click on Siri down here to enable it, but that's kind of annoying. The easiest way to do this is on the newer Mac keyboards. You just hold F5 with the microphone button. If you hold that, you'll see that Siri automatically enables. Uh, you can also do, hey, S word as well uh, on Mac OS. I prefer to do it on the keyboard though, cause I don't like accidentally triggering uh, Siri on Mac. But look, now when I use Siri on Mac, I can go, Set an alarm for 5 a.m. Done. And look at that, it's gonna set an alarm in the clock app. I can go set a timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, counting down. So you can see there's like a new interface. It doesn't take up as much space. Show me the weather for tomorrow. Looks like rain tomorrow. So you can see that. And then if you click on the weather, it's not gonna take you to a website anymore. It's just gonna take you to the weather app. So now that Mac OS has more of these built-in apps, um, it's, it's an improved experience with Siri as well because it doesn't punt you to like websites as often now. Okay, this next trick is for Apple Mail users and that is now the ability to schedule mail and also the ability to unsend mail. So to do this, just open up Apple Mail Let's go ahead and send this to randomperson at gmail.com. Sorry, randomperson at gmail.com. We're sending you an email. And now when you go over to the send option, you're gonna see a drop down menu now and you have the ability to send now. It's gonna give you a recommended. So I can go ahead and send this at 8 a.m. tomorrow or you just go ahead and hit send later and you can just schedule this yourself. So I'm gonna send this message to random person on Friday. And let's go ahead and do it just before he gets off work. So we're gonna do it at 4.08 p.m. And we're gonna schedule that mail to be sent. And now the mail is scheduled to be sent to that random person with that Gmail address. Listen, they pick that email address. They probably know they're getting some random mail being sent that way. Uh, but listen, now let's say, hey, I, I didn't wanna send that message. Why did I send that message to a random person? Uh, well. Number one, we'd actually have to send it because it's not sent yet. So let's go ahead and compose a new email. We're gonna give random person a break. We're just gonna send this to me. So let's go ahead. We'll just fill this out. Test, test, 
And now we're gonna hit send, right? So we hit send message. Now when we hit send message, you're gonna notice something new. On the bottom over here, there's now an undo send. Hit undo send, and we unsent the message. So apparently this is only active for like five minutes after you send a mail message. And that's the only amount of time you could do that before that mail is sent out. So you have to act fast if you send something and you don't want it sent. But that feature just doesn't work in mail on macOS Ventura. It also works in messages. Now, this was a really big feature when it rolled out in iOS 16, but yes, it is also available on macOS Ventura. So now in messages, let's say you sent something you didn't wanna send, right? So we're gonna send a message. We're gonna go, Greg, you stink really, really bad. And we're gonna send that. And you know, now it's sent. And you're like, oh no, I, I didn't mean to send that. Uh, so basically what you're gonna wanna do is right click and that's uh, a default on macOS on the trackpad. Just press your two fingers down on the trackpad and you're gonna see the, a new ability now to undo send. So hit that, undo send, and it's gonna undo that message that you sent where you said, Greg, you stink. Why would you send that? Now you can unsend it, right? Uh, but you might, you might have also noticed another option there when you're sending a message. So let's go ahead and say, Greg, you are a girt person. Now I meant to say a great person. So I'm gonna send that and I go, oh, you know what? I, I put a typo there. I meant to say, Greg, you're a great person. Uh, now right click that message again. Now instead of, uh, you know, we want Greg to know he's a great person. So instead of undoing the send, you're just gonna scroll down to edit. You hit edit and now you can edit your message. So we're gonna go over type in great, hit return, and now that message is edited. I just typed this to myself, so it's not gonna actually edit the message on my end. But yes, if you sent that to a person, as long as they have the latest version of Mac OS Ventura or iOS 16 or all that stuff, they will now be able to have edited messages. And of course, um, if you actually want to see like a backlog of the messages, you just click on edited over here, and you can see the whole backlog of edited messages. I believe there is also a timeout function for undoing, sending, and editing these messages. I believe it's around 15 minutes to make sure you do that. And let me cover one last really cool feature with messages uh, with macOS Ventura, and that is the ability to filter messages now. So uh, when you have your messages open, you're just basically gonna go up to this top area and hit view. You're going to see uh, a way to filter your messages. So right now I have it set to all messages so I can see all my messages. But uh, let's say, you know, I just wanna see people I know who contacted me. I don't wanna deal with spam. Well, you can hit known senders and then that's gonna organize my messages by known senders. Now I don't have a lot of spam, so it didn't really change, but let's go to view again and we can now do unknown senders. Thankfully, like I said, no spam in my mail quite yet. Uh, no one has leaked my messages. Don't do it if you if you know who I am. Uh, so you could see, but if you had like unknown senders you want to check, like maybe there's some spam uh, messages you wanted to get rid of, you could do that. And then probably the most useful one is to filter this by unread messages. So go ahead and click unread messages. You know, I'm pretty good at reading my messages. So, uh, you know, no unread for me, but you, could, you can kind of get the point. I feel like I should have did this a little bit better where I had some unread messages, but hey, you get the point. If you had unread messages, they would show up here and you could just click back and go to your regular message field like always. Okay, but those are my favorite new tips and tricks for macOS Ventura. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope it was helpful uh, for you learning some of these new tips and tricks that you can now use in macOS Ventura. Again, it is now available to the public if you wanna download it. But yeah, please let me know in the comments below what was your favorite tip or trick let me guess, it was probably the first one with the iPhone camera. I gotta admit, I think that's probably the coolest one. Uh, but let me know what your favorite one was, or if you have one that you really like that I didn't cover, make sure you let us know in the comments below as well. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to give me a like. If you wanna see more from the channel, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.